In this Diablo 4 build guide, I'm going to be showing you my Toxic Shredder, which is a druid build that focuses on the use of werewolf and poisoning enemies over time. So the general concept of this build is that you're going to use multiple abilities that deal poison damage in order to stack multiple poisons on enemies at the same time, so that their health just kind of depletes very, very rapidly, and also crowd control them so they can't get to you and that you're safe. So we employ two different methods to do this, and I generally alternate these methods in between trash pulls so that I always have one off cooldown so that I'm not waiting around for my cooldowns in between pulls. That allows me to get through dungeons quicker, get through enemies quicker, etc. But generally what I do first is I use Vine Creeper if the trash pull is big enough. I usually don't use this on smaller ones. I'll usually use Rabies on smaller ones, but if it's a big trash pull, I'll use Vine Creeper, which will root enemies in place for some time while they're all poisoned. At this point, I'll start attacking with Shred and holding that down or hitting it multiple times in order to do the hit combo that will hit multiple enemies and poison them with the last hit. You want to make sure you always do at least three hits with this if you can, because that last hit hits the hardest and also applies poison to whoever it hits. So you want to do that if you can. If you don't have enough spirit to use Shred after you use Vine Creeper, you'll want to use Claw until you have enough to begin using Shred. Shred is your main DPS skill for this build that isn't poison damage. So it's going to be your bread and butter whenever you're fighting a boss, an elite enemy, anything that's tough to kill, big group of enemies, you're going to be trying to shred through those enemies or that boss over and over and over. And when you run out of spirit, you're going to be using Claw to build it back up, and then you're going to be using Shred again as soon as you have enough spirit to use it. Now let's say that Vine Creeper's on cooldown or it's a smaller trash pool. What we're going to do is we're going to use Rabies, and what this does is it sets a very strong poison on one enemy, and then that rabies begins to transmit to other enemies very rapidly, and pretty soon they're all infected with poison, and they're all taking damage over time. Now, if you have the legendary aspect, aspect of the Dark Howl, on one of your pieces of equipment, you'll actually be able to change the ability, Debilitating Shout, into a werewolf ability that will root enemies for almost four seconds that are poisoned. So this allows you to apply rabies, and then you'll cast Debilitating Shout, and then they'll be rooted in place, and you can employ the same strategy of attacking with either Shred or Claw and then Shred, whatever you have available with your spirit. And then you can alternate. So the next time you use Vine Creeper, and then the next time you use Rabies and Debilitating Shout, you just kind of go back and forth. You always have, you know, one of those setups off cooldown, so you don't have to wait in between trash pulls. And of course, obviously, if you're fighting like a very deadly trash pull, or there's like a bunch of elites, or it's, you know, it's a dire situation, you could obviously use Vine Creeper and root them in place and then hit them with Rabies and give another poison on top of that, and then wait for them to come out of that root and then reroot them again with the building shout. So there's a lot of things you can do here with it, but just keep in mind just generally going from trash to trash to try and alternate. But if it's like really bad, you can start stacking them on top of each other. Rabies is also really good against bosses and elites like that when you're fighting them. It just gets another poison dot on them while you're attacking them with claw, setting another poison, while you're attacking them with shred, setting another poison. Even if you use vine creeper on their setting, like you can have like up to four poisons on them at the same time, which is great. We also have Blood Howl here, and Blood Howl is a spot heal. This allows us to heal ourselves regularly, and that's really great for this build too. That's going to save you a lot of potions and your runs through dungeons and stuff like that. Maybe you're on a tough boss fight and you don't have a lot of potions because you're not doing that great with it or whatever. This is going to save you potions. Not too many builds can actually self-heal, and this is a very, very good one for you. And not only that, but it'll also give you some spirits. So... Anytime you take like 10-15% damage, use this to heal yourself so you can get some spirit, and then you can start attacking with Shred also. Some really good legendary aspects for this build, besides Aspect of the Dark Howl, which I mentioned before, is Exploiter's Aspect. This is going to increase the duration of your crowd control, which you have two roots for this build, so that's really good for you. And also, it's going to allow you to increase your damage against targets that are basically uncc'able. So, I'm assuming that's bosses from what I've tested so far. I feel like that affects bosses, but we'll need to 100% confirm that. But I'm relatively sure when you can't, because you cannot CC bosses, that this will apply to them. Another really good legendary aspect for this build is Stormclaw's Aspect. This makes it so that when you critically strike with Shred, you deal a percentage of that damage dealt as lightning damage to targets around the enemy. So this makes, you know, Shred into more of an AoE and allows you to hit more enemies regularly as long as your critical strike chance is decent. And you will obviously get double value of this if it's on your weapon, so I highly recommend you have it on your weapon, and that's two-handed weapons, of course. So if you have it on a one-handed weapon and you have a totem or something like that, you won't get double. That's why I recommend two-handed for this build. Getting that potent, you know, double potency on your legendary aspect on a two-handed weapon can sometimes make all the difference in the world. Aspect of the Unsatiated is very good for this as well. That says after you kill an enemy with Shred, your next werewolf skill will generate more spirit and will deal increased damage. This is usually going to be Claw most of the time, but, you know, it could be other skills as well. And since you're using Shred anyway all the time, it's just a good one to have. It just gives you increase of damage and more spirit generation without even having to think about it. 
And Vigorous Aspect is one that I can't recommend enough for this build. This basically gives you a damage reduction whenever you're in Werewolf form, which is like 99% of the time with this build. So you're just going to get a flat damage reduction, and that's going to help keep you alive very, very well. So bonuses you should be on the lookout for are Critical Strike Chance. This is really important for this build because of the Stormclaws aspect, as I mentioned. You should get Predatory Instinct as well. This is going to increase your Critical Strike Chance by 3% to close range enemies at each point, so that's 9%. It's basically a 9% critical strike chance on top of whatever else you have, so that's really good. So critical strike chance is important if you have that aspect. If you don't, it's not as important. Damage over time is good. Poison damage is good. Crowd control duration is good. To keep enemies CC longer, damage to crowd control enemies is also good. So you want to be on the lookout for those things for your build as well. And just a final tip before I wrap up this video, when you're facing bosses with this build, essentially all I do is I sit there and just try and apply all the different poisons I can get. I try and get a claw on there. I try and get a Shred on there, I try and get the Vine Creeper on there, and I try and get a Rabies on there, and as soon as they're up, I just keep refreshing them and then attacking with Claw, and then attacking with Shred as often as I can attack with Shred while dodging, and using Blood Howl to heal myself as much as possible, trying to avoid using potions when I can, because that also gives me Spirit, which then allows me to Shred more. So that's kind of the strategy with bosses. It works very, very well with this build. This is one of the easier builds I've played, in my opinion. It's absolutely devastating in just about every scenario, and it works really well in a group as well. So that wraps up the Toxic Shredder Werewolf build. It's a lot of fun to play. It's very, very easy to use. And we have another Druid build coming later today. It's a Werebear build. It's also a summoner. It focuses primarily on the companions, which is really fun to play as well. It's a little bit different than this build. And then tomorrow we'll have some Necromancer builds for you guys. How are you guys enjoying the open beta? I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are. Let me know in the comments below. 